Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm gonna be doing a video by myself. Uh, Geeky is is not feeling too well today. She's gonna to take the day off, but um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for things to talk about. And I wanted to talk about this a little bit more. We, we've been talking about how it seems like there are uh, factions of people or groups of people looking to deplatform YouTubers and deplatform websites they don't like. And uh, it's all very strange um, seeing all of this ramp up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we thought maybe it had something to do with Lucasfilm, with Star Wars, and, and that might be the case. We might have multiple groups of people that are interested in deplatforming YouTubers and websites they don't like. Um, because, you know, we can't just have a dissenting opinion. We have to make sure that, uh, you know, the people we don't like are gone because it's a problem. But I think that there's been a lot of building resentment going on. And there are a couple things that could have triggered, um, you know, whatever the hell is, is going on here. Now, we talked about it in a video the other day talking about, um, you know, there are actual flow charts out there uh, outlining websites that are problematic uh, we are on here twice, both for Pirates and Princesses, which has been around for years, uh, by the way, as a Disney theme park blog and also uh, Clownfish TV. And, uh, you know, I've noticed a lot of comments lately we've been getting. I've noticed some of the, uh, the wacky emails we've been getting. And I, I have to tell you, I think that there are some, some salty people behind the scenes, sad, salty people trying to stir things up. But... You know, it might go a little bit deeper than just, you know, Star Wars hate. Uh, I think it just, you know, speaks to the situation going on right now with pop culture journalism. And basically the jobs are drying up. There aren't a lot of jobs in pop culture journalism and the jobs that are out there don't pay terribly well. These websites are starting to dry up. So I think, you know, a potential trigger, a potential trigger for some of these people anyway, uh, they've been watching YouTubers do pretty okay for the last couple of years. A lot of times commentary channels like ours, you know, they talk about news stories they've seen around the internet. Um, and, you know, that's got to kind of bother them on some level, but also, you know, people like us do drive traffic to their websites too. So it was kind of this weird symbiotic relationship. Now, what is changing? Well, what's changing is more and more YouTubers are actually starting their own websites. They're starting their own news outlets and they're gaining traction. In fact, I can tell you Pirates and Princesses is gaining all kinds of traction. And, um, you know, it's it's basically getting noticed and not in the good way, I, I think, by some people. Uh, I think it definitely is a threat, whether that's to Disney, to Lucasfilm, you know, other journalists. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit and talk about just kind of the utter state of pop culture journalism and how it could be better than this. These sites didn't have to crash and burn. They really didn't. So before I get into it, please subscribe to Clownfish TV on YouTube. Uh, we've got 174,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support, guys. It means a lot. Um, our YouTube channel has been around for about five years now, six years now. And it's only been the last three years that it's been you know, getting traction. It took a while to kind of hit our stride. Mostly it was us, you know, speaking out against uh, stuff going on in the industry. We, we worked in the comic book industry. Uh, we had a literary agent for a while. We we're pitching graphic novels. We had optioned a cartoon series. Um, we ran another website with a partner that was a, a Disney, a pretty, pretty well-known or was well-known at the time, Disney news site that uh, had media access with Disney. So, you know, we got, got a look at the inside of how, how that works. And I can honestly say that things for the most part for us anyway, I mean, we get some weirdness every once in a while, but for the most part, things were pretty, pretty even keel. You know, we got some comments that were weird. We get occasional emails that were weird, but in the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, things have gotten really insane. We've been getting a lot of really crazy messages. We've been, you know, having people again, put us on freaking lists, you know, it's like, what is going on here? And uh, I do think it could potentially beyond, you know, people being butthurt at uh, Lucasfilm or whatever, or disgruntled fans, it could be 
other journalists uh, who are angry that not only you know did we grow our YouTube channel talking about pop culture news, and we've actually grown our channel to a point. We, we're actually still a very small YouTube channel, but we do get more views than a lot of these these other outlets do, like Nerdist and Collider and you know all that. Um, Schmodown, I think, is another one. And uh, we did it in a relatively short period of time, about two, two and a half years. And now we're going back to websites. Um, so I don't think they really cared so much as long as we were relegated to, to YouTube. But now that we're doing websites, now that we're building up our websites and, and these people are losing, losing their jobs, um, you know, there, there does seem to be some freaking out uh, going on here. And the real shame in all of this is if these people weren't crazy, we would consider hiring them. <laughs> you know, it's like if you actually wanted to to do some pop culture journalism and you could keep your politics out of it or whatever and not attack people on Twitter, we would actually consider hiring you because we actually do have writers. Uh, we do pair writers pretty well, all things considered. I'm going to talk about comic book resources and how little they pay their writers. Uh, and I've heard this from multiple sources. And I had some more confirmation on, on Twitter. But yeah, uh, Sci-Fi shut down the Fangirls blog not too long ago. Uh, I think it was November. Okay. We have uh, Newsarama, which for years was a pretty well-known comic book site. It's basically been rolled into Games Radar. It doesn't really exist on its own anymore. Um, we've got Nerdist and Geek and Sundry, which were owned by Legendary. Uh, they are you know, laying off tons of people. I don't expect for them to be around much longer. I know Critical Role jumped ship and they went and started their own YouTube channel, which was probably the smartest thing they could have done because it's definitely uh, this access geek media is is burning down. You know, uh, media layoffs were at a record high in 2020. I know there was a hashtag yesterday. Uh, I think it was like harsh writer reality or something like that. I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was a bunch of journalists trying to find work. Uh, they can't find work because all these websites are shutting down. They're cutting back. They're laying people off. You know, um, the desperate year of digital media titans, BuzzFeed laying a bunch of people off. Vice laying a bunch of people off. You know, it's 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 bad. Uh, Vice took their, their gaming site. This was even before the pandemic and they rolled it into to Vice. I mean, these sites are bloated. Uh, they're laying people off like crazy. A lot of these journalists live in like New York and San Francisco. So the cost of living is through the roof and they're not getting paid very much. Um, they really aren't. Um, you know, this, this was a bummer. This is a Graham, Graham McMillan. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but he writes for the Hollywood reporter and he's actually pretty good. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest. He's actually pretty good. Um, but he got, he got laid off. He got laid off, uh, yesterday. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of support for him from the comic book community. But how many of these people can actually afford to pay him to, to write about pop culture? You know, uh, not in this economy. I don't know. But, I mean, this is part of the reason why I think so many of these people are salty. Uh, Ezra Escarlet uh, put this up. This is the pay rate, apparently, for what CBR is, is paying. I, I think it's true because I've heard this from multiple people. I actually had some CBR contributors reach out to me early on when we we started talking about pop culture like this and they were like, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, you know, the, the pay rates are bad. Uh, Valnet owns Screen Rant and Comic Book Resources. Um, here's the pay scale. $5 for Flash News for a 200 word article plus 50 cents per every 1,000 page views. 10 bucks for a news story at 400 words, you know, plus pay-per-view. So they get bonuses. Um, $20 for features, 1,000 words, the bonuses. $30 for super features, 2,000 words. Uh, Geeky jumps in here and says, this explains why these sites have these long rambling articles that go on forever and have little point. And uh, Ezra says, you'll love to see it. CBR writes trash shipping clickbait article lists, and I have Discord friends that fret and stress over them. These kids can't tell reality from clickbait because they see an article and they think it's true and even reputable. Uh, comic Book Resources used to be a reputable site. Newsarama used to be a reputable site. Um, I would even go so far to say as IGN. People throw a lot of shade at IGN. I think back in the day, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I thought IGN was pretty solid. And it's all sort of 
collapsed. I mean, the whole thing is kind of collapsed because I think, you know, the money never really was there. Um, definitely not working for one of these like mega, mega blogs that are, are basically part of the marketing department for a corporation. I mean, you've got CBS, I think owns uh, comicbook.com and they're basically just part of the marketing budget. That's, that's why they exist. Uh, they're not really self-sustaining. I think there's money from other sources that's being funneled into these blogs. And when the money runs out, they get shut down because they can't afford the marketing expense anymore. Right. It doesn't pay. Um, what we actually need in pop culture, in my opinion, is we need more independent voices and we need more blogs that are self-sustaining. I'm not talking just like, I just put my blog out there. I put my, my Wix page up and, you know, put reviews up of cartoon shows or whatever. I, I'm talking like actual blogs that make actual money with uh, different opinions that aren't, you know, I mean, I know a lot of these blogs have gone far left and I think part of that is a location. Um, I think, you know, being based in New York, based in San Francisco, based in LA, based in Seattle, whatever, those are the kinds of people with their political leanings you're going to get to write articles. And also the money, I'm going to be honest. Somebody who's a capitalist, who's right-leaning, isn't going to work for this kind of money, <laughs> you know, for the most part. So, you know, it is what it is. But I guess my thing is like, you know, this is all it pays, you know, don't, don't complain. But I do think there has to be a better way. I think there need to be more legit news outlets that are not in the back pockets of these companies. I know full well, what it's like to be in the back pocket of a company. Again, uh, used to run a, a Disney site that had media access. You could say that the site was literally bankrolled by Disney and it wouldn't be too far off. I used to write pieces on Marvel Comics and Lucasfilm all day and nobody cared. That's why it's so weird that everybody's coming after Pirates and Princesses uh, now, now. But uh, three or four years ago, I used to write about you know the sales at Marvel Comics and the drama at Lucasfilm with The Last Jedi and all of that, nobody at Disney cared. I never got any emails. I didn't get any real pushback. Uh, but my God, if I misspelled a restaurant name or an attraction name, I would get an email from Disney within minutes. And it sucks being in the back pockets of these people, you know, being in the back pockets of some corporation. But, you know, it is expensive to, to run a website like this. It's hard. You know, I keep saying, well, why don't these people just go start their own website? And I don't know if they can. I don't know if a lot of people who write for these sites actually could do everything it took to build a site from the ground up, uh, you know, get it running, get all the SEO stuff working, get it into all the news uh, places you need to get into, keep the site running while also, you know, getting a decent ad network and making it make money and all of that. It's a lot different than just, you know, banging out articles, bitching about cartoon shows or or uh, defending Shira or whatever. So I think a lot of these people are stuck there and they're miserable. And it seems like they're trying very hard to tear down uh, potential rivals because they know there's not enough to go around. There aren't, frankly, aren't enough eyeballs or resources to go around. But, you know, these blogs have kind of diminished themselves over the years. They've chased, actively chased off fans. They've actively chased off readers by being overly political. And they've actually driven viewers to YouTube. The reason that YouTube channels blow up the way that they do is because they're, they're still, you know, opinions coming from fans. This is what these sites used to be. Comic book resources and Newsarama, uh, you know, they used to speak for fandom. They got interviews with people. They had a fairly friendly relationship with the industry, but for the most part, they were still fan blogs. They just happened to be monetized. And, and we need that again. We need authentic voices. We need, you know, new sites popping up that have different opinions. But you're not allowed to do that. Because if you, you try to compete, you get put on lists like this and they harass you. You know, bounding into comics is being on the receiving end of lots of harassment. You know, it, it's so weird. It was like, if you don't like bounding in the comics, just don't read it. You don't have to go there. You know, go, go to Polygon. You're totally fine. Go over to Polygon, read Polygon. You don't have to read bounding in the comics, but you're not allowed to exist. And so I think that there is, 
you know, there, there are multiple things going on here. And I think part of it is salt over Star Wars. But I really do think that now that they're starting to make the connection between websites and YouTube, and they're like, wait a second, we don't even get to be the middlemen anymore. Some of these people are starting their own websites. This isn't good. This isn't good for us. And I'm like, well, it's a bummer because, you know, um, I'd love to hire people. I would. We actually could pay people better, I think, than comic book resources. But if you're all going to be a bunch of dicks <laughs> and try to get try to get our site taken down, try to get our YouTube channel taken down, throw shade at us at every every opportunity, then I'm I'm not so inclined to uh, to do that. You know, uh, I'm really not. But uh, we absolutely need more authentic voices, more independent voices. We need a balance, and I don't think the response to the uh, the far left politics on the majority of pop culture blogs and gaming blogs is necessarily a a right wing blog. We need to bring it back to center and be like, let's just talk about the things we love, and um, you know, find a way to to find some common ground and just give people the news, give people interviews, and uh, give them honest uh, you know game reviews or or movie reviews or whatever, and and just kind of put it out there like we used to. You know, I guess we just need to roll things back about 10 years before everybody went absolutely batshit crazy, poisoned by politics. Uh, Cause it's getting really old guys, it really is. But um, yeah, I just wanted to do a video talking, talking about my thoughts on that. I, I think there definitely is something going on behind the scenes. Uh, and I do strongly suspect some, some very salty disgruntled journalists might be playing into that. I know for a fact that these people talk uh, talk on Slack, you know, behind the scenes. I know they do. Uh, a lot of people from different websites, they all kind of uh, converge on different sites. I used to be part of those groups. Not these groups in particular, but groups like that where you would have seven or eight, you know, site owners from, you know, decent sized sites kind of just talk and shop. They're absolutely doing it. I guarantee you there are journalist uh, Slack channels out there where they're all talking about, you know, all these websites and YouTube channels popping up. That they want to get gone uh, because it's in their own best interest. They can't have their their sites decline uh, because they're already on thin ice, you know, and uh, people are going to do some crazy stuff when they're desperate. Thing is, is you guys didn't have to be in this position. Uh, again, if you hadn't lost your audience by going batshit crazy with the politics, you probably would be able to keep your job. You'd probably be able to get paid more because there'd be more ad revenue rolling in. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.